Hi everyone. I hope you liked RFT. It's my first time doing voiceovers for a dungeon bit. Pretty different. Normally, for tutorials, I keep the volume for everything else down low almost the whole time. For the dungeon bit, the volume spiked back up whenever I wasn't talking. Do y'all prefer it that way, or would you rather I keep everything else low on volume? Let me know in the comments. Doing voiceovers for the RFD vid isn't the reason it took three months to get it out. I'm just busy. I've got a lot of stuff going on in the months of February and March every year, so there's that. It was pretty tedious, though. For perspective, Mara Redux had over 300 voice clips throughout the whole thing. And those were long, like it's a tutorial, I'm actually explaining things rather than commentating. RFD only had 250 much shorter voice clips. It was easier to arrange for sure, despite still being tedious. Funny story about the soundtrack. I knew that I wanted to use a heavy OST for RFD because I felt good about the Ravager there, even if I was scrubby with its use at the time. I like to be thematic too, so RFK needed a heavier OST, and that's why I used the Quake soundtrack there, aside from RFK being a great run with a great group. I thought it would be easier to sort and choose the Descent tracks I wanted for RFD, but it's a fairly short OST, and, as always, timing the tracks is a challenge. I can't believe I forgot to take footage of the quest outside. Maybe my hard drive was out of space or something at the time. I don't remember. I hope my going back and doing it at 60 was fun enough for y'all. Anyway, as you may have noticed, we are in Darkshore at the moment. And I've got some exciting news. I haven't been idling entirely in the past few months. I've also been playing around with ideas for the Darkshore run and working on a mod. You all saw Shadow Glen and Teldrassil. Shadow Glen was from a fresh start, no assistance, and that starting zone was obliterated. Teldrassil, I had an LRB equivalent at level 6, but I continuously demonstrated proper shot combos and kiting. Hopefully my breakneck pace in doing every single quest in the zone, along with several alternative objectives like a little herbing and getting hunter pet skills, made it quite clear that even if I did keep it going from fresh start, it would have turned out exactly the same way. Now, Darkshore, this is going to be special. As you've no doubt noticed, I'm wearing some weird looking gear for a level 12. Here is all that gear. Pause if you want to read the details. Now, you might be wondering, but Rezaya, why make it even easier? Don't you want to demonstrate technique and stuff in a way that'll teach the baby hunters how to into Hunter? Well, yeah. Here's the thing. Everything in Darkshore is getting buffed. Every single mob in the zone has twice as much HP. Heals and defense-oriented buffs or debuffs are twice as powerful. And all attacks and offense-oriented buffs or debuffs are three times as powerful. So it's a very static scaling up. What I'm not changing is the movement speeds, that kiting will look exactly the same. Combat will look a little different, but I'll still be doing those quests in an order I'm normally comfortable with, and the world will be even more dangerous than it should be. It's gonna be exciting and fun, trust me. If you are concerned there are too many new mechanics added through the items and such I have, don't be. The Cult of Emerus Impulsors are akin to Swiftness Potions, which you can use at level 5. Maybe you'll get an idea of how useful they can be, and pick some up when leveling normally. The Cloak of Invisibility doesn't get you out of combat. I'm not going to be using it to skip oodles of trash mobs, just to speed things along here or there, like scout that Furbolg village, or get back to the road without either killing red mobs along the way for XP, or trying to avoid them and wasting everyone's time. The flask in one of my trinket slots is just an infinite potion. You'll find plenty of those in chests, or have some left over from Teldrassil if you followed my alchemy route. The only difference is that it's a little stronger to be on par with the higher numbers of damage I'm taking, and it'll restore mana too. 
I'll mostly be using it to avoid sitting and drinking, so it's once again just a time saver. The Sleeper Fang cannot take control of two targets at a time, and it won't function if I have my pet out. Although we don't get dual wield or pole arms until level 20, I don't know if I'm going to take the leveling vids further aside from the dungeon series, so I want to do something special. But for Zaya, Sins of the Father is OP as shit, and a Forever Stun isn't a normal in-game mechanic. What on Azeroth are you going to use a Forever Stun for? Well, there is one thing I'm changing about the mobs in Darkshore that I'll need it for. Unlike all the normal mobs, every rare mob is being converted into a world boss and given special mechanics. Why? Because it's fun, that's why. I'll need to use the Impulsors and Flask on pretty much every boss, and they are not meant to be fought alongside other mobs. If I screw up and ass pull something, Sins of the Father is there to take something out of the fight, one thing at most. I won't be using it on the boss's ads or the bosses themselves, although it works on literally anything. I know this all sounds like a ton of work, but it's actually way easier than I thought it would be. There are tons of resources online, and it turns out all you need to do to script the boss fight is plug in some numbers. This here is a screenshot of this SQL editor I found online, Heidi SQL. This is the scripting for the Lady Vespira boss fight. It's all very straightforward, all values I pulled from a reference table and compiled into scripts. You wanna see? Of course you do! Vespira is one of the tougher fights I made. She's also the highest level boss. I'm not going to say anything more. Just watch. I made that look way easier than it actually is. Pretty tough, huh? We've got nine of these guys to kill across the whole Darkshore vid. Vespira is a test of attrition and conservation. I guess that's all I wanted to say for now. I'm gonna keep working on raid prep and the Aldemon vid, and of course I'll continue to develop this Darkshore project. If y'all have any questions, requests, or whatever, just let me know in the comments. See you in the next one. Good luck, and happy hunting.